Hey, hello, Cherries. Merry Christmas Eve. and all got it in there why not it's live and it's live merry christmas eve to you give you a round of applause for hanging out with me a little bit here today hello Ozman, scott olson as usual i will get to the lesson i'll put a a timestamp in the description for when i'm getting to it which will be shortly just want to say hello to some of my friends here in the chats tom g merry christmas jerry and chat Merry Christmas to all. So good to see you. Merry Christmas. Morning all. Oz man. Butt up. Paul, what's happening? So I started off with just a simple three note per string pattern all over the neck. And this is one of the coolest things that um, I ever learned. And it's very, very helpful. And I'll just show you like a, a quick chart right here. Let's not let that be too confusing right there because it, all it is is um, it's just seven pat it's seven positions right there of the E major scale, starting at the the top left and then going down. It's the first position, then the second position, then the third position, the fourth position, fifth position, sixth and seventh. And I'm just going up the first one and down the second one, up the third one, down the fourth one, up the fifth one, down the sixth one and up to seventh. So I'll get to that in a sec of how I did that. But wow, you like the hammer? Yeah, I broke out the hammer today. It's crazy because I have a I'm doing a recording of a new song and uh, trying to get a tone for the um, guitar solo. There's a little whammy part in it. And um, so trying to break out the uh, new strings on here, stretching them out. You know, what I mean? it only comes out in special occasions. That is true. Tom G. Very special. I'm doing a guitar solo for this new song I'm working on. And uh yeah, and uh, Scott, that Squire is amazing. Yeah, you talking about that Squire telly? Because it is, if that's what you're talking about. So, all right. So back to to the um, to scale here. Check this out. Let me show you something really cool here. Here is the three note per string, starting on E. It's just an E major scale. Check it out. This is probably one of the coolest things you'll ever learn right here because it's just so simple. And it's the E major scale. Going horizontally. All right. Two octaves. And then back down. Yeah. 
So, and then I'm just basically moving it up to to the second one here, the second position, which is you start on the second note and just going up the same notes. Now I won't get too detailed as far as um all the notes and how they work and all this, but there's an E major scale in here as well, which is right here. Which is really cool to see the E major scale in all these different positions. So you played the first position. Then you play the second position. Now what's cool is playing these both together, like um, with a metronome, do something like, let's see, if we do, do it real slow. You can go right into them. Like the first, the pattern is like this. I think that's really cool because it goes in in um, in fours, the triplets, but there's four beats. One. Just one, two, three, four, two, two. So you have. Winds up really even evening itself out with your picking techniques. I'm going down, up, down, up, down, up. I mean, they're all alternate picking. I'm going down, up, down. But as far as the strings, down, up, down, up, down, up. Then I'm going down the next pattern. So pretty cool so you can go <laughs> and <clears throat> so that's the beginning of really opening up what you can do all over the fretboard because you can see you can go to the third position which is um i'll go to not this one i'll go to the third position right here we'll go to this one this box oh, not that where is it right here so you have this third position You're starting on g sharp <laughs> If you want a um, PDF of all these charts, just send me an email, info at Jerry Cherry, and I'll email you that PDF. <clears throat> but three notes per string, starting on the third position, the G sharp. Because you have, you know, the E major scale. <clears throat> Every note has its own position. So that's why there's seven positions right here. And there are also modes, depending on what the root note is. We won't really get into too much of that right now. So, so it's really the major scale. <clears throat> it's a solfage. It's a movable. Don't attack me here in the, uh, in the chats and in the future when you when you see this. People like to think that C is the only do, <clears throat> do re mi solfage syllables. What they call them. But it's a movable dough, so we're in E, key of E major. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> By the way, what are you drinking out there today so far? I have my coffee. I know it's beer o'clock somewhere. Maybe some eggnog, it is Christmas. <clears throat> So you're gonna, so this third position right here. From 
emphasizing this third note because <clears throat> that's really the position, the G sharp. Since G sharps everywhere. Because nope. I'm going to show you something in a minute that's really going to blow your mind and it's really going to be helpful memorizing intervals all over the place. Because these are all the same. If you really think about these seven positions, check it out. Here's the first one, right? Let me go back down to um, to the screen where you can see. I can talk closer up. Here's the first one right here. <clears throat> Notice how my fingers are all doing the same thing here. three fingers, well I'm using all four fingers, but I'm using three notes per string. I'm only hitting three notes. And the beauty of this is that it's always going to be one, two, three, as far as the intervals go. One, the second, the third. It's always going to be the four, five, six. So just like an E, it's always going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back to one again. Those are your seven notes. One. And once again, you start at one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And one again, too. One, two, three, four. Four, three, two, one. One seven six five four three two one seven six five four three two one. So it's the same everywhere. And the beauty of this is that you know where all of your intervals are because all those numbers are intervals. One two three four five. Here's your fifth. Here's your sixth. Seventh. Same thing here. One two three. The fourth. Fifth. Six, seven, the root. And we all know that because that's the major scale. We know those sounds. But if you bring that up here, it's the same thing in this position. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, root again. So you have one, you have your second, third, fourth, fifth, root, second, third, fourth, fifth, six, seven. Now, look at what is similar there. Your E, your, I guess this finger, and I'm not going to shoot you a bird, but your, um, your middle finger <clears throat> is always going to be on the root here. So no matter where you are in these posi positions, <clears throat> your finger is going to, that's always going to be the root of that position. That's always going to be the second, that's always going to be the third. Fourth, fifth, you know that's the sixth, and you know that's the seventh, you know, that's the octave, the second, and so on. So, really, really cool. If you have any questions about this stuff so far, let me know. I don't want to lose you on this. Steve I, what the F? <laughs> What's happening, Steve Vai? Is this the real Steve Vai? I don't know. But, yeah. So, checking out this um, scale right here, we'll go back to, to this. We'll go back to the first one. Here. No, nope, not that. We're going to go to, uh, mark this out. E major scale. Three notes. <laughs> And it's really, really cool that you could memorize all the intervals this way. Root, second, third, fourth, fifth, 
sixth, seventh, the root, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and the root again. Like I say, going up to the second one, it's always the, sec the same thing. The fingers are in the same position on the next position, up towards the root, second, third, but it's a minor chord now, the major six. So what's really cool is you can go through all of these positions right here, just like this. Check it out. In this pattern right here. a little bit maybe we go to like 80 check it out you can go from the second position to the third position now that would be on the left charts the third one down so where it says um, G sharp. Well, the second one will be the F sharp. Let's go from the second one into the third one. Let's go up the second one. And I'm going up four like this. And then I'm going back down to the D string. So I have four more. Like. So you have. like that. And down. So I'm going down the third position, which is like this. So you might be wondering, so how is this helpful, really? Well, it's really helpful because this is going to help you memorize the scale all over the fretboard. And you could do this with like any scale, really. It doesn't have to be E major scale. It could be E minor. It could be melodic minor. So it's really, really cool. And, you know, breaking this down into single string patterns, too, which is cool. Because a lot of people do that across the neck. Where if you just took the top part of it, where it's just like this. You know, you don't have to do the whole scale. You just break it down into little fragments, segments of it. You know? The first two strings. Second two strings. Third two strings. Fourth two strings. Are the, the next four strings. Silly. <laughs> All right, hopefully you guys are having a good time. If you are, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications. All that groovy stuff. You know I love you. And it's a merry, merry Christmas coming up tomorrow. What's your plans? Any plans for Christmas Day? Let me know. Let me know what you're doing on Christmas. And uh, just checking something here real quick. Just take me one sec. Make sure I have this.
correct here. Make sure everything's good. And, uh, all right. All right. Everything's a cool. Cooking my butt off. Osman, cooking your butt off. Well, what you cooking? Cooking up something good, I hope. <laughs> Trying to find another Les Paul for Christmas? <clears throat> ah, I hear you. Uh, I think my one gold top right there is, is enough for me, but uh, if you want to find me another one, that'd be very cool of you. <laughs> well, thanks for spending some Christmas Eve time here with me. Really, really, really appreciate it. Really cool of you. You know, really fun. Fun times here. Really a special occasion breaking this out. Must be that time of the year. Christmas. But um, definitely good to know these um these patterns right here. You know, going over to this um this one right here, like breaking this down to segments. It's really cool. I mean, look at that top part right there. It's C, C sharp. C sharp, D sharp, E. People use that all the time. Oh, you want a 60s style, Les Paul. Ever notice how people do this up and down the neck? Oh, there go. I may not do that, but <laughs> they go up the neck. It's like this. Just messed up the whole thing. Check it out. What they're doing, they're just going up. They're going up the whole three notes per string pattern. <laughs> Look at the top parts of all these. The very first one right there, you'll see like, um, see that the very top left chart, the top of it, you see the C sharp? Right there. That's blending into, now look at the graph right below that. You'll see that the D sharp, right there. And they keep going down to the third one on the left. You'll see then, then the E. Then you'll see the F sharp on the fourth one down, fourth graph. Then going up to the top right graph, starting on the, um, what is it? G sharp. I like that G sharp, sorry. And then, um, yeah, right there. A. And then B. Okay. And right back to where you started. So you don't have to use the whole thing, you could use just little segments of it. Levi, sorry, about what? <laughs> about what, your uh, WHF? I feel the same way, don't worry about it. <laughs> but, now, yeah, it's really cool to kind of do segments between all this stuff. I'm um, going from...
going off the rails. You know. Now, one really cool trick on how to memorize this right here is I'm playing these little fragments out of the three notes per string here, and I know that I'm starting on the C sharp. So C sharp in the key of E is the, um, is the sixth degree. So I know you have that minor scale. So here's a C sharp minor. Right? Check it out. C sharp minor on the C sharp note right here. So I know all the degrees. I know it's a second, minor third, a fourth, a fifth, and a minor sixth. Now I know that the next note in this s fragment is um, is a uh, D sharp. So I know that's the seventh degree of E. So I know the position is second degree, and you have the minor second, minor third, fourth, flat five. So I know this position right here too. I know it's always going to be these degrees. So it's one. So in case you're lost, you always know. Okay, I'm on the seventh position, seventh degree. I know here's the first position, E. It's a major scale. Second degree. I know it's a minor with the major six here. The third degree. I know that that's a flat second, and the rest is regular minor. It's Phrygian. Fourth degree, and it has a sharp four. One, two, three, four. And fifth degree, regular, major, first six string, first six notes. Back to the seventh. I mean the sixth again. Keep going up if you want. So you guys getting all this? <laughs> Trying to make it as simple as possible. It's really, really cool. And you could do that on, on all the strings. So it's like, you know, you're playing someone's jamming in E. You know, for instance, um, so you got a little chord progression, right? I'll try to do it in time with this. I'll do like a... Check it out. thing um we'll do uh c minor c minor is cool that's what we started on c minor so let's erase this loop just hit like a c minor chord here get in time maybe if we're in tune here Check the tuning. That's pretty good. All right, here, here, try it. I didn't delete the old loop. <laughs> here we go. Two.
So see what I'm saying there? Like now you're just playing up and down the neck vertically. You're not stuck in one box right there. You're playing fragments of three notes per string of the seven positions. Now I did make a video, a real video where I, you know, I teach the three notes per string pattern in E major, which is really cool. I just played in C sharp minor, which is the relative minor of E. So just going down from E, that's the minor. Major, E major. It's relative minor, C sharp minor. So, uh, very, very cool. Oz, man. Merry Christmas. I have to start cleaning the guillotine. What? <laughs> the galamad. Oh, the galamad. Oh, nice. Ah, that's good. Uh, I, there is a joke in there somewhere that I was going to say, but I'm, I did that. It bombed, so I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> Scott, you got a cramp in your left wrist? Oh no, from what? Must be from playing guitar. And um, you gotta take it easy on those, you know, when you're playing, you know, it's like, you gotta do, do the right stretches and um, keep it loose, you know? Because uh, you can't play if you get cramps in your hand, right? So definitely um, take it easy as far as that goes. So, I won't keep you too long here. Tom G. Go to Sheep's Head Bay, Jerry, and go by Randazzo's. Probably, um, I've heard of that. I've definitely heard of that place. I'm not a real big fan of the uh, Galamad, to be honest with you. But uh, I'm not against it. You know, anything fried is, is good, right? <laughs> I mean, assuming... Assuming that it is fried. So we're going off the rails a little bit today. I mean, it is Christmas Eve. And um, the ABBA tribute band's name is ABBA Cadabra. <laughs> ABBA Cadabra. And um, <clears throat> there's also a second one. It's called SOS, direct from Sweden, the music of ABBA. So it's really two different <clears throat> bands. Check them both out. And... Uh, you could stuff it also, yeah. You could stuff it yourself. <laughs> All right, just kidding. But enjoy them, for sure. Enjoy. And so I guess um, <clears throat> that's really the point I wanted to make here today. Is just check out this three-note-per-string thing, and um, hopefully you could understand this. It goes from top left all the way to the, to the bottom, and then the, the row on the right. So it's seven positions there. And they're really easy. It's just seven positions. It's just the same notes rotated over and over and over again. But understanding these three notes per string is really cool. And the second one. one. So I'm not even looking at it. I'm looking at the, the charts up there, but I mean, I know these. You know, the sixth one. Seventh one. Back to the top again. Now, what's really cool, like I already did, is you could take fragments of those, of those pieces. They're all the same notes everywhere. <clears throat> and I already explained that 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> With this finger, I'm not going to point it at you, but I know this is the root note of all these three notes per string. Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, minor, major. So I know where all my thirds are and all these chords. glaze ham that's what I feel like sometimes I, I hardly ever use a whammy bar so I'm just having a lot of fun with it today I always want to break out this guitar the Jerry Cherry See? It's so dirty right there I got a little dirty pots or Jack, rather. So, um, going through the um, three notes per string on the sections here, <clears throat> I showed you it on the E string. It's kind of fun going like doing that stuff like a, like a. Uh, That's on the B and the E string. Do the same thing on the G and the B string. So we know this pattern right here. Let's take it from the G to the B. That's a hard one. There. You have to move up that, that sharp four. And it's, you know, you're, you're you might think that, well, how am I supposed to remember, you know, all the fragments going from one position to the other like that? Well, once again, I'm, I'm not really thinking of the fragments right off the top. I'm kind of thinking of, okay, well, I'm on the third note. I'm only doing two strings, so I know my intervals. The third, fourth, fifth, six, seven, one. So it's really just a fragment of that three notes per string. Right? But I'm only doing that fragment. And I'm going up into the next one. Starting on the A, you know, you have the the A is the fourth degree. So I know the I know the um the intervals of the fourth degree. It's like a Lydian. But I know the the steps. You got the hole, hole, another hole. You know, skipping onto the B string is tricky because 
it's tuned differently. It's a it's a third instead of a fourth. So you have to compensate for that. So you have. So I know I have the one, two, three, four, five, six. Just like here's three, four, five, six, seven, one. Here's the fourth degree. So I have four, five, six, seven. Back to E. One. I'm starting on B. I know that the, the pattern is um, regular second, regular third, regular fourth, regular fifth, major six. So I know the degree, so I'm not getting lost there. I know, here's the root. I know the progression. I know it's a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth. Now the sixth, just a minor scale going up. C, regular second, minor third, regular fourth, fifth, minor six. Seventh, I know it's a flat second, minor third, regular fourth, flat fifth. Back to E major. that maybe you pull the bar up like that some crazy stuff's about to happen that's a black cherry hammer yes Tom G what's going on here it's a little dirty so we won't touch it just don't touch it <laughs> yeah man um, this guitar it's got very sentimental value to me, you know. It's it's cheap guitar. I will, I will say that. I'm I'm getting a bit snobby in my old age with with guitars. So I have like all these guitars, are top notch, like Gibson Les Paul, Strat, All American, made Tele, Broadcaster, SG. This made in Japan. Hamer, one of the lower line ones. But I bought this at a time where I was. Um, Man, I didn't have much money at all for, for anything, let alone another guitar. And I bought it for one reason, really. I joined an 80s tribute band back in um, 2010 or 11. I was just kind of, I was still playing with Chubby Checker, which explains why I was broke. <laughs> but um, yeah, I joined this, uh, this great tribute band. It was, they're called, they were called, at the time, they were called the Rubik's Cube in New York City. And I was actually not in the band. I was subbing for them. And, um, you know, just uh, playing a gig here and there when Eric Presti, the original guitar player, couldn't do it. I call him Eric Presti, the godfather of 80s rock, which he is. And I didn't have, like, a, a guitar like this with a whammy bar. All I had was my um, my SG at the time, and I had a uh, my Carparelli. I don't know if you've ever seen my, my Carparelli. It's a, it's a Les Paul copy. It's a little bit shaped different. Great guitar. Weighs, like... All these put together it's so heavy but it sounds great when i did my sweet child of mine guitar solo i used that because i didn't have the les paul yet and i was the closest thing to a les paul because it sounds like a les paul and i used that i used the um the carparelli for a bit to audition for it and once i start i got this gig as a sub eric's like he had like a million guitars like he had so many guitars he had this one solo to me for 200 dollars, but um what it had was, and this is little remnants of what was left over. It's that little white speck. Well, he had put white electrical tape up and down. So it, I'm sure there's pictures. I have pictures of it. And it was um, like Eddie Van Halen would do. But it was just white stripes going up and down with electrical tape. And eventually it started just, it was years before I took it off. <laughs> I mean, it was starting to come off. It was glue everywhere and looked terrible. So, um... You know, I used this gig many, many, many times in, in those for those 80 shows. I mean, it has the sounds in it. It has this one particular sound that's really cool. Right here, you pull that pot up, real thin, you know. And it took me a while to get used to that sound. I don't think that does anything right there for that. We're kind of going off on a, off on a tantrum here a little bit, but... Uh, but that sound, that split coil in the back pickup right here. So 
So it's really weird to try to understand that sound and play with it, but um, it isn't out of phase. You know. But it has that real qu quacky sound that, you know, it's not so different. Than you know, it definitely works. Like. A lot of high end, real brittle, but it pops out. Definitely works for, for the thing. And it had a bar on it, and it was metal, and I needed a bar. It was like, this was a serious 80s gig, and if you couldn't go. And play Eruption at halftime <laughs> of the show, then, you know, couldn't do it. So, Bought this guitar, $200, along with a cabinet. It was a 212 cabinet because this time there was no amp sims or anything like that that I was using. It was just a head and a cab. And um, that's how I got this guitar. And it just um, stayed with me, even though I, I'd sub periodically in the band. And long story short, I still use it on recordings because it's still one of the heaviest sounding guitars I have. So I'll record like pop songs or whatever songs, not even necessarily metal or hard rock, but it just has that really good bite to it, you know, with this Nobles pedal. You know. It's a nice chug. Nice breakup. happy with, with the sax. Very cool. Just put these strings on last night. So, you know, keep it in tune. So. A little bit of a trick there. But, yeah, getting back to those three notes per string, you know, really cool. kinds of like rolls like that. To the, the next string too, you could do it on the um, on the D and the G string. Okay. So a few more minutes here. Go down um, the string. Just like playing vertical across the neck. Same 
Same thing on the A string. Be like a. Uh, I got that out of three notes per string. <laughs> Can never hit that chord right, so I just bring it down. It's easier to play it here. Oh. Really cool stuff. Low fi AM stuff. That sounds wicked. Nice. Oh, he's with the uh, that pickup, that split pickup thing. Yeah, really cool. So, yeah, if you want this, these charts, let me know. I know I was kind of all over the place with this today. Sometimes it just works out that way, but it really makes a lot of sense. You know, taking these, breaking them down into um, different fragments of what you want to do, and it's really just an amazing thing because you could sit there and you could be playing and you could be in one of these positions, like the third position right here. You know, and just kind of get like a total feel for it. This one, this position. So really, just kind of open up your mind to different um, things you could do. It's really cool, and they're all the same notes. You know, it just gives you a whole nother flair. So I didn't want to get too technical on this, but it's just a way to take three notes per string and just dive a little bit deeper into it and some of the stuff that you can do. With it. So Merry Christmas Eve to y'all. Thanks for spending some time with me. Paul Merrill, you are the best. Tom G and Scott Olson, thanks for hanging out here with me and hopefully you get something out of this, you know. And it takes a little while, but if you just do it and just kind of dig into it, you may know this stuff already for the most part, but uh, any of you guys out there, any of the millions of you out there in the world watching this, <laughs> who will be watching it, you know, it takes a little time, but all of a sudden it's going to kick in. You're going to go, wow, totally get that. And it's going to be really cool. Like It happens to me all the time. Sometimes it just takes years before you really grasp the importance of certain things, you know. So thanks, Jeffrey Boyle. Very, very cool of you guys to hang out here today. Where's Steve Vai? Steve Vai still out there? Steve Vai. I don't know what you're sorry about. It's Christmas. <laughs> but I love all of you guys and gals. And um, yeah, I said if you want um, this PDF, shoot me an email, info at Jerry Cherry. And uh, I'll just mention real quick, because it's the holidays, the perfect, the perfect Christmas gift 
to somebody would be a guitar course, right? <laughs> Someone you know wanting to play guitar? Say, hey, you know, Jerry Cherry's got a cool guitar course. You can learn the whole fretboard. You can learn the circle of fifths. You can learn how to play the blues. All in one, six simple videos. And uh, it's a perfect stocking stuffer. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'll put a link for that at the um, top of my description. And uh, you can check that out when you, what am I doing here? When you get a chance. I don't know what I'm doing. It's technology. It's driving me crazy. So, have a Merry Christmas to you guys. Pat McGee! You are the best. You are the best. Another guitar player. I will have a great Christmas. Thank you. Have a great Christmas yourselves. Thanks for spending Christmas Eve. Part of it here with me today. Have yourself a cherry cherry little Christmas. <laughs> Merry cherry Christmas, everybody. I love you. If you want to see another video of three notes per string, all positions, check it out right there. And until then, be cool, be kind, be cherry. I'll see you in the next video. I'll see you next week. All right, got something good too. I got a new toy coming in the next couple of days, and you're going to love it. It's really, really cool. So I'm going to show that off. All right, love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Merry Christmas, y'all. Merry Christmas.